Well, I am happy to be here with Justin Doherty. He is the executive director of Autism Autism Action Partnership. Sorry, tongue tying me a little bit. Um, but Justin, it's so great to see you again. Uh, you too, Andy. It's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I think we were we we're sitting here about a year ago, um, talking about your annual annual event coming up. But let's mm-hmm. just first talk about Autism Action Partnership and who do you serve? What is the mission of the organization? Uh, Yes, thank you very much. So uh, we are Autism Action Partnership. We're a uh, 501c3 in the state of Nebraska. Um, Our biggest footprint is the Omaha metro area with a lot of our programs and services reaching the kind of Omaha Council Bluffs uh, autism community. Uh, But a number of our programs do uh, reach statewide across Nebraska. Um, Here in uh, April of 2021, we actually rebranded our organization. And so um, we're still working on my my speaking points, but our three primary core, uh, core buckets of, of focus are support, inclusion, and prosperity. And so kind of foundationally support uh, anybody in the autism community, whether an individual or a family who needs anything can reach out to us and we might not be able to provide it, but we'll help them find who can provide it. Um, we provide a number of, of ways to connect with um uh, the network, basically, a lot of families will reach out and say, we just got a diagnosis. We have no idea what even questions to be asking. We're not even searching for answers yet. We're still trying to figure out what questions to ask. Um, and so we do a lot of work with families to try to connect them with uh, the right folks and, and some peers and some peer support. Uh, we do a lot of work with uh, around safety and support uh, for individuals and families and homes um, to help them connect with uh, police and, and a variety of other uh, things specific to the autism uh, landscape. Uh, inclusion, our work uh, is, is that's kind of a two pronged approach towards aut- the autism community, working with them on enrichment activities, on programming with inside of schools and across the community, um, as well as inclusion work with uh, you know, uh, employers and uh, venues and places like that to try to create a more inclusive environment and better, better in services. And then lastly, prosperity is our servicing uh, that we're looking to it. We're working on expanding actually right now around workforce development and kind of young adult and into adulthood, that transitioning into, you yeah. know, yeah, what what the rest of the life is after after school ends for individuals uh, with autism. Yeah, because that probably, I mean, that has to be probably one of, um, there's a lot of challenges, um, but transitioning through that, you know, high school and then into adulthood. And I think that that has to be a big one. Yeah, so so much of autism uh, for the last few decades and still to this day, early intervention is so important and so much focus on kids with autism and those school services and supports, early intervention, early intervention. Well, you know, God willing, we're all spending the most of our lives as adults. And so there's decades upon decades of adulthood and all this work to prepare. And then a lot of those systems kind of fall away once the school age ends. And so a lot of families are experiencing that, you know, their 20 plus year old loved one. What what does their day to day look like? What is their these next couple of years or of the trajectory of their life? And so we hear a lot of that from the families that we serve and we're working on on trying to figure out where our role is in that. And Justin, over the years, I mean, I think the awareness piece, which is a big part of what you do as well, um, Mm -hmm. that you may see more cases. It's not because potentially there are more cases, but maybe it's just the awareness piece. Or can you speak to that? Uh, Yeah, I mean, the kind of research says it's both. It's 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 yeah. more prevalent, but also uh, there are individuals who likely years ago, decades ago, went to school with with you or I that would that would today be identified as having autism that perhaps were identified with some other um, uh, special need or disability. Kind of a bit those bigger, broader buckets, and as it's yeah. become. Uh, better understood by families, by the community, by pediatrics uh, and uh, education. It, it's be- these these boxes checked equals autism, and so um, the belief is that it's it certainly was a lot lot more prevalent than it was believed to be, uh, but also that it is increasing in, in prevalence. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your event coming up, a vintage a vintage affair. What mm-hmm. year is this? This is the thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Lucky number 13, A Night in Paradise Yes, um, is the theme this year. Uh, one of my, I just, I, I love this event, um, but let's talk about it because it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, last year you were totally virtual. Correct. Correct. Uh, is this year you're a little bit of both? 
Yeah, so we're we're we want to keep some of that virtual uh, component, and we'll be you know. So we we learned a lot last year, uh, and um, uh, we missed the gathering of everyone. And so uh, one, we we are uh, going to be hosting a live event and, and welcoming people there, and uh, providing. Um, uh, masks and um, hand sanitizer, a number of things we'll be doing differently physically at the space, having tables uh, separated and less people at each table, we try to create a little bit of uh, social distancing and make sure everyone that attends feels comfortable. Also, for those who aren't able or um, would choose not to, uh, we want to respect and support them in that decision uh, and, and make it as easy for them to participate uh, through, uh, socially, uh, through social, um, uh, social uh, online social. And so... Um, right. We're, we're doing that as well. So we have a, a website um, where the event, all the event information is, and people can bid against humans in the room uh, for items from the comfort of their own home. So we're trying to a hybrid, I guess, this year uh, as we as we still trying to figure out what the what the new norm looks like. Absolutely. And as we were talking before, you know, before we started recording, is really how um, the hybrid, at least right now, allows more people to participate or to engage and to, and to support, um, the event that evening. Um, it, yes. I mean, we're, I think all of us as a society, as we were saying, um, are learning how to harness this, this thing. It used to be kind of, uh, this other thing that some people were doing and then all of us are now doing it and learned it, you know, the drinking out of a fire hose for a number of months. Right. And so now we're getting uh, hopefully back to a place where we could return to the old ways but there's been a lot of learning, a lot of growth and a lot of kind of best practices figured out through the virtual component. So we're working on it. We're comparing notes with other organizations on what they're doing and how they're doing and what they're seeing. We want to reach as many people, but uh, those numbers only matter if they're, if they feel as though there, there's a connection. And so that's the sweet spot is how do you connect with individuals virtually um, and not just have them click on a button and, you know, that's not a connection. That's, that's just the reach. So yeah. That full that full circle of communication, right? Feedback, right. response, all that. So the event is September twenty fifth. Yes. Um, and it's at where is it at? Uh, Embassy Suites La Vista. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people uh, can go to the website to to purchase tickets, but they can also purchase live tickets or virtual tickets. Uh, yeah, on our on our uh, organization's website, so autismaction.org, uh, under events, you can you can access the the event site and then the actual event site is aap.givesmart.com and both of those are, are basically avenues to the same page where you can get information about tickets, sponsorships, tables, uh, donation, access silent auction items or silent auction items They'll go live on uh, September 17th. So we usually give people about a week to look through everything and see okay. the pictures and start to figure out what their strategy is for Christmas shopping and birthdays and things like that, um, as well as uh, opportunities to, to see videos and learn more about our organization and our mission and where all this, where all the fund uh, fundraising goes and how it changes lives. Yeah. Well, Justin, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, your organization does such important work. And um, I will definitely look forward to connecting with you soon, um, maybe before the holidays, and we can talk about how people can support you during the, the season of giving. So, Well, thank you very much. And thank you for all you do and, and all of your work to help uh, get information about us and, and all of all the others uh, around the community. It's a wonderful service as well. So happy to partner with you on this. Continue to. Absolutely. And folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, I am so excited today. I have here Michael Watkins, the Marketing and Communications uh, Manager for Youth Emergency Services. We're going to be talking about a big event coming up in October. And Rebecca Pasqualetto, owner of Vintage Ballroom and Dance um, and Dance for a Chance instructor. So thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Well, like I said, we've got this great event coming up. So 
but it is for youth emergency services. Um, I believe this is the, what, what year is this? Do you know? Well, you know, last year we had to cancel. So I think it's the 12th or 13th. I okay. can't remember. I think it's, I think it's the 12th. Okay. Well, regardless, this does raise funds for youth emergency services. So Mike, I'm going to let you just kind of take it away and, and talk about the mission and, and what is youth emergency services. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for letting us come on your show, Andy. You're welcome. Long time knowing you, so I really yeah. appreciate this. Um, you know, Youth Emergency Services has been around for more than 45 years. We were founded by a group of concerned parents who noticed some homeless youth in the old market and figured it was time to do something about that. So people often refer to us as Yes House, and that started in Bellevue in 1974. So since then, we've grown quite a bit. We've gone from just being a shelter to, you know, a multifaceted uh, continuum, continuum of care. And we provide um, homeless or services for homeless and near, near homeless youth ages 12 to up to 24 through our range of our programs. So we help a lot of youth every year, more than a thousand youth every year. Yeah, oh my God. And, and it's so important and, um, what the organization does and and how it's how it's grown i think the the organization itself has grown also the need has grown in the community would you agree with that especially um last year with the pandemic we we ran into so many situations with youth who needed somewhere to live because they were either on the street and unsafe or you know in precarious situations with their own living situations and then the pandemic hit and yeah. um, some of them couldn't work anymore so we we helped them with rent assistance and, and food and we have a, a pantry in our street outreach center so they could come in and get food items and yeah. you know there's just we're, we have so many different services for them yeah absolutely well let's talk a little bit about dance for a chance um, because that is the event that's coming up on October 7th Right. At, and it's being held at the Omaha Design Center. That is the last few years. Um, right. I have been um, honored enough to be a judge um, for, for many of those. I remember when it first started. Uh, but Rebecca, let's just go to you for a minute because you've been a, you've been a participant because um, mm -hmm. you were kind of a media. You were in the media. Yes. Yeah, so so my involvement with Youth Emergency Services actually started four years ago. Um, they were looking for more instructors, and we ended up, we had already opened our ballroom at that point, and we ended up connecting on that level, and I've just, we just had so much fun, right? And um, the homeless youth population that we see in the old market, we're always trying to, you know, assist those kids and um, get them to where they need to be. And so being in the old market, we see a lot of exactly what Mike is talking about with the homeless youth down there. So being able to um, help them in a, in a more positive manner is super important and um, special to us. So we were so excited to be able to jump over and help raise money for youth emergency services. And so, and your studio, like you said, is in the old market. It's where the Blue Barn, I mean, I, I know a lot of viewers um, where the Blue, Blue Barn used to be before they moved. Um, in the old market. And you said that you like moved in, in there immediately after they moved out and, and have this dance studio. So have you danced in dance for a chance or are you just, yeah. okay. Yeah. So um, I've done, this will be my third year dancing and fourth year as vintage ball. And so we have other instructors as well who are dancing. Okay. With Got it. Yeah. yeah. And we always love putting choreography for a show together it's so different um, compared to you know teaching a couple how to dance for their wedding or prepping for a ballroom competition when you can actually choreograph something for a big show like this you can have a lot more fun because there's less rules right when you're doing a ballroom competition there's all these rules you have to stick to and when you're performing for a show those kind of go out the window as long as it looks good and you're having fun and your partner's having fun and the audience is just constantly amazed that's what makes it so entertaining to watch. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things about one of the things I love about Dance for a Chance um, is that it is it, it's a fun and, it, and it's a ballroom competition because you um, as the instructor, so to speak, are paired up with um, a local celebrity or, or local, um, you know, somebody in, in the business corporate community. And mm -hmm. 
they may know nothing about ballroom dancing, but they just, you know, they said, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to raise money. I support this organization and I want to have fun. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know, it is about raising money and also having fun. And it's a, it's, it's a great entertainment. Um, it's just, it's very entertaining. And so you're that, you're that, you're the person on the other side that's helping sure. them. And the competition side, I mean, it is there, right? But it is so much different from what we're used to. Yeah. We're not um, I, competing against people who've danced their whole lives and are more focused about how their foot's getting placed on the floor. The competition's all within everyone who's kind of in the same boat, same level of dance experience often. And it's it's more like, it's just a, a, a more entertaining kind of competition. Absolutely. For, like what you're gonna see on the show Dancing with the Stars, right? Where it's all for show and everyone's there just to be entertained. Yeah, and, and the people um, the people that are dancing in, in this year's competition, I mean, you know, they're just doing it again to support the organization, to have fun, to um, perfection is not the ultimate goal, though showmanship, and it is a competition. So, I mean, some people take it very seriously, which is why it's so much fun to actually mm -hmm. attend this event and go and buy tickets and be a part of it. Well, and the dancers that are participating, not the instructors, but the dancers, they put in a lot of work, right? They are very much wanting to win the dance challenge and as well the, the other side of who can raise the most money. Yeah. So for them, it's very much a competition, right? Um, but it's, in a, it's a more fun manner. It, it, a lot of just um, jabbing at one another on the, on the dance floor when you're practicing ahead of time, kind of joking about who's going to have a more fun or interesting routine when they're out there. And it's just so entertaining to watch on my end i'm lucky because i get to see everyone's um prep work ahead of time right as they're coming in and out of the studio and then watching them grow to finally seeing them on the big stage so i get a more behind the scenes look which i find so fascinating to watch the growth of these dancers <laughs> well like i'm going to turn it back over to you in the last like 30 seconds that we have like mean, where can people go to buy tickets because again this is a great event and people need to be there. Sure thing. Um, so anybody can go to our website, which is yesomaha.org and click on the very first um, screen that you see that will take you to a page where you can vote for our dancers. The votes are a dollar a piece or you can, and you can also buy tickets. Um, there's also sponsorship information on there. So if you want, if you work, you have a business or you work for a business, you think they might want to become a sponsor, there's sponsorship information on there. One thing I wanted to point out, Andy, was this year has a special theme because we it's the Roaring 2020s. So everybody's going to be, hopefully everybody's going to come in costume from that from the era. And I know the dancers and the instructors have chosen music, some music from that era. And then each of the dances will also have an element, may not be the entire dance from that era, but they'll have an element of dance from that era. So it should be a very special theme this year. And, you know, Tickets are available at yesomaha.org. Yeah. Well, Mike and Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me. Again, this is a great event. Um, October 7th, um, Omaha Design Center, great location. And be there or be square. Is that like really ridiculous to say? <laughs> I said it. <laughs> Andy, okay. Andy, before we leave, I got one more thing really quick. Yes. Yep. We also have a virtual element this year. So if people okay. are not feeling safe about being in a crowd right now with the, you know, the COVID is still a thing, you can go onto our website at that same spot and buy a virtual ticket for $25. And then that will allow you to watch. And that's great for some of our dancers to have family that aren't local. Yeah. They can now, you know, stream it and, and vote for their dancers and also buy silent auction you know, things like that, that they wouldn't normally be able to do if they weren't in town. Absolutely. And, and I love that. I love that component to it. Um, so thanks for, for mentioning that, Mike. Sure. All right, folks, um, don't go away. We will be right back.
Well, welcome, my friends. I am so excited here to be here with Gordon Krentz. He is the director of special events at the Nebraska Humane Society. Gordon, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. I always enjoy talking to you. I know. I always love our conversations. Always so much to talk about, especially when it comes to the Nebraska Humane Society. Absolutely. And we have the Walk for the Animals. I think you said the 32nd yes. annual Walk for the Animals. Um, one of my favorite walks. So, yeah, you know, and the walk, when it first started, I believe they were either at Standing Bear or Chalco. I think they had. 50 people, maybe. Crazy. And they uh, had, uh, I don't know who was there, but they had one table and people came up and said, hi, I've raised some money. I want to help the animals. And then they walked around the lake, which was wonderful. And now we've blossomed into this, you know, 1500 people. And we have all these different things and activities at the walk. So the amazing yeah. thing to me is that it the community still supports it and they know how important this event is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay, so the walk is coming up on the 26th of September. Um, why walk for the animals? Why is the fundraising piece of this important? Thank you for asking, because this is our most important annual fundraiser. And what it supports is our animal medical and most of the quality programs that we have here at the shelter to have the homeless animals. And to have the community support behind us when people register and say, yes, I can do this. And the easiest part is um, actually asking your friends because yeah. it's kind of, I had an aha moment a few days ago where people were afraid to ask for money for the Nebraska Humane Society. When I was doing my page and getting my message ready, I realized that my brother, my friends in New York, my friends in Arizona, California, they want to support me. And so they know that I'm passionate about the Nebraska yeah. Humane Society. So when I composed the message to say, would you help me in my quest to help the animals? Absolutely. I will help you, even if it was $10. And I have, yeah. I have success. Wow, that is a great aha moment, um, yeah. regardless of what we're, we're fundraising for. But I mean, you in particular, the animals, but when you're asking, because people do want to support us as friends, individuals. Yeah, they want to support you. They want to help you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, all right. So again, coming up on the 26th of September, right. um, it's a Sunday. Um, okay, can you share a story about how Nebraska Humane Society has helped an animal Recently. Okay, so I have to choose one, right? Okay. Yeah, choose one. I know. So um, I think one of the most recent ones that's impactful for me is, um, you know, we have drop boxes and mm -hmm. at night when people find an animal or want to surrender an animal, they can do it safely and they can open the, the cage, but it's a solid front and they can put the dog in there and close the door. And once they close it, the door is locked. So um, we had to, every morning or late at night, they checked, but this was in the morning and they went in there and there was a dog and they went, oh, okay. So, you know, they, they got her out only to realize that this dog was going in labor. And so they rushed her to Animal Medical and they knew that she was having a little bit of distress and this wasn't happening correctly. So our team of vets and vet techs who are very passionate about what they do, jumped into action and they actually, <coughs> excuse me, they did a, um, a C-section on this dog wow. and they saved all the puppies. And I think had that dog not been brought here and was just left somewhere, I'm not so sure that the dog or the babies would have lived. Yeah. And I just think it's amazing what we do. And then the rest of that story is, then we have this amazing foster care program. So then yeah. this dog and her puppies are in foster care. They're getting the TLC they need and the care and the love that we do give them here, but we can't give it to them 24 seven, which a foster family can. So we are so fortunate to have this um, chain of command, if you will, that allows us to give the animals the quality care that they need to survive. Yeah. And that's another thing um, 
that people can, I mean, I, they go to your website, they can also learn if they, if they have the resources and the mm-hmm. wherewithal and want to be a foster parent Absolutely. for, um, for yeah. these animals, which is so important transitioning regardless of, of whether they're tiny right. kittens or whether they have something happen to them, being able to then get them into the system to be adopted out to a for, forever right. family. I mean, cause it's just not litters of animals. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Animals that need the medical care, like an amputation yeah. or they, a lump removal or something where they need tender, loving care before they go into kennel to get adopted. Yeah. Yeah. That's so amazing. So, yeah. okay. So back to the walk, um, is there a registration fee? No, this year, um, you know, last year it was virtual for obvious right. reasons, but um, you know, for this reason, but yeah. this year there is no registration fee. Um, because we know that many people want to just help and they want to come that day. So they register, but if they do want a shirt, um, as of right now, they need to raise $75. Um, and if you raise $75 by the end of this month or the 25th of September, then, um, we will have your shirt ready for you at the end of October. And the reason we're doing that is we're trying to be better stewards of a donor's dollar so that the most dollars possible go back to the animals. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's less asking, that's asking 7.5 of your friends for $10. Exactly. <laughs> right. Or yeah. 14 or 15 of your friends for five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's done. And uh, I think you and I were chatting before some people are, it's just interesting that they're afraid to ask for money, but when they ask for money because your friends want to help you, that's all the difference in yeah. that. Yeah, and being passionate about animals and right. the Nebraska Humane Society. So is there going to be a 5K this year? Yes, and we're going to start that at 11 o'clock. That's right, right. when the event starts. So peak performance, good friends of ours will manage mm-hmm. that run, and we'll start from our property at 8929 Fort Street. We go across the bridge on Fort, through Democracy Park, and then down the Keystone Trail. Okay. We make the turn and then come back. And then the walk will happen at 1215. So if you're a slow runner, you may run into walkers. I, I don't know. Yeah, but they're <laughs> all out, but they're all out and you can bring your dogs. I mean, yeah, I, I've yeah. done this event so many times and I love it. And I've done the 5k and every, I mean, half the people are running or walking with their dogs. I mean, right. that's the point of it. I, and we do ask that, you know, it's a run ready dog is what we say. Sure. Um, you certainly don't want a dog and drag them along if you're running. That's just not yeah. healthy for the dog. But we do ask that the dog is run ready. And we do have a veterinarian at the finish line if yeah. we see a dog in distress or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are, oh my gosh, I said, uh, come on for like a five minute interview. We're like into eight minutes. So, um, so, so. Uh, go to your website, um, anyhumanesociety.org, and then backslash walk or forward right. slash walk um, to learn more about this and to raise funds. Um, so I think we just, we got to call it good on this interview, Gordon. This was we great. Do. And I, if I have a final message, it's please go to the website, take the time to register. Yeah. And if you have room in your heart to possibly help the animals, register and raise some dollars. Absolutely. And we'll see you on September 26th because there's so much that happens on the 26th. Yes. It's a very family friendly event. There's a lot of activities and a lot of vendors and a lot. Rescue of groups, yeah. adoption parades, beer gardens, a food court, a silent auction, a family zone. It's just, oh, and the vendors that give away free stuff. And who doesn't love that? Yeah. All right, Gordon, my friend, thank you so much. It's so great. Thank to you. See you. And um, I'll see you on the 26th. All right. Thanks for being there. Okay. Okay.